Welcome to Veil VR. My name is Yelha, and today we're going to go over everything, and I mean everything, you need to know about Veil VR and what it's trying to do for the VR scene and how to get your hands on the game, how to play the game, and how to play the game well. So, to go over who I am, first of all, because, you know, I'm just some random person on the internet, my name is, again, Yellow Hat. I'm one of the members of Vortex, one of the winners of the Miami Veil vale Major, which is one of this game's major feats already. It is releasing, and it has had a major LAN tournament in VR, and that is something that is just truly amazing about it. But anyways, that is kind of my background for this game. So first off, what is Veil vale VR? Veil vale VR, as I was kind of mentioning, is a first-person shooter in VR that aims to be the top competitive shooter of VR. And so this game has been in development for many years already and it is finally releasing to open access and eventually we'll, you know, keep going down that development path and whatnot. So what modes does this game offer? What is this game's sort of flagship? So there are a couple modes. First off, you have your standard team deathmatch, right? You have the flagship competitive mode called Artifact, which is what this thing is right here. And so Artifact is basically this game's take on the classic search and destroy mode, which is a five on five, no respawn round based mode where attackers or the colonists, which is the one faction, have to scan the artifact, which is this thing right here. And you'll see these on each of the maps. And then the defenders or the rayab which is what i am dressed as right now have to defend or interrupt the artifact being scanned so the first thing we're actually going to do since this is undoubtedly where you're going to load in when you first boot up veil is we're going to go over how to plant or scan the artifact so you have this which is the scanner and so it goes on your chest like this and you simply just hit your grab button to hold it and release it. You hold it palm up and then you go inside of the boundary of the scanner, right? And then you're gonna see this puzzle right here. There are five blue balls and one yellow ball. You're going to trigger grab the yellow ball and drag it to the pink one. When you do that successfully, it'll turn green. And then you move to the next pink ball and the next and the next and then the final one. And then the scanner will start scanning the artifact. And so there is a 45 second timer for the Ray app to stop or interrupt the scan happening. And so when you retake the site, what you'll do is simply grab with your grab button or your hand and then hold the trigger and you'll see this bar fill up. And you know, you can swap hands, do whichever. And once the bar fills up completely, then you have interrupted the scan. So that is the first thing, and that's going to be an important thing for if you do try out the artifact mode. Now, not everybody's going to try out the artifact mode, and that's okay. So, what is this place that we're in right now? This is the armory. And this is where you're going to be able to experiment with every weapon in the game and, you know, Hone your skills a little bit before you hop into a lobby. Now, before we even get into that, let's talk about settings. So, in order to open up your menu, you're going to hit your A button by default. And this is different for each um, controller. I'm personally on a Valve Index, but you'll hit your A button and your menu will pop up. And you have your server browser, a custom game browser, your friends list, your loadouts, your social, your scoreboard, and your settings. So we're gonna first go to settings and kind of explain what each one does. So we start off with gameplay settings. And so one cool thing about Veil is that you can adjust your reticle color. And so I can make my reticle bright purple. And as you see now, my reticle is bright purple, or I can swap it to be orange if I wanted to. Or what I, what I do, is I keep mine to be green because I like it green. It's a personal preference thing and this I really like because it is very thoughtful of people that are colorblind. So this is how you change your reticle color. You'll simply just trigger grab the menu and slide it around. 
the display hints. So when you unload your weapon, you'll see that the charge handle is glowing this bright green and this is signaling you to, you know, pull the charge handle. Now, if I go turn that off, that's not gonna show. So this I really like because it's good for newer players to be able to understand how to play the game. And it also is good to show you if you're out of ammo or not. So that is what that display hint does. The spray, this is your custom spray and you have to set it to a bind. I believe it's either the push to talk bind or I have to double check my steam settings and I'll overlay it on the screen here. But anyways, so I have my teams, which is Vortex and we'll spray it right here, maybe. I sprayed it on the stair, it didn't work out. Oh, there we go, now it's gonna disappear. There we go. So you can insert your own custom spray, as you see there's um, like Royal Strive, for example. That was another team at the Major, or Wrecked. And uh, we'll shout out Cobra Cartel as well. They're all the way. But it also shows you a preview of the spray as well. So let's get Cobra, because we need to show all four teams of that major some love. So that's Cobra Cartel. We're going to swap it back to Vortex. All right, Virtual Stock. This is one of the big settings, and um, I'm going to throw a link down to Chill Step's aim guide, because, you know, he makes really good guides on how to aim and how to be a pro and everything. But Virtual Stock is a setting in most VR games that allows you to simulate you having the weapon up against your shoulder since you're just holding two controllers there's not really a way to you know have like that third contact point so virtual stock does that so we're going to show what it looks like when it's off so you'll see it's kind of wobbly a little bit and you can move your back hand and you can move your front hand and everything and they're kind of independent of each other and you can't really shoulder it so you have to either you know shoulder it physically like hold up the controller to your face or you know put your hands together or a controller stack. I personally use virtual stock. Some people don't. Again, it is a personal preference. So type one virtual stock simulates it when you have your weapon up against your shoulder. So you can still see it's wobbly like this, but when I bring it closer, now, now I can't move my hand as much, but it's a much more stable. And this is similar to if you have ever played Onward and Onward's Virtual Stock. Albeit, I actually like this one a little bit better than Onward's Virtual Stock. Again, when you move your gun stock away, it wobbles like the no Virtual Stock, but then you put it closer and then you have your Virtual Stock. Now, Virtual Stock 2, or Type 2, is for all the time. So I hold my weapon out, and you see I'm moving my right hand just side to side, you know, independent of my left hand. And it's a little bit steadier. And this is for people that like to hold their controllers out and don't necessarily bring their gun all the way to their face. This is personally the one I use because it's just the most consistent and it's most similar to other VR shooters that I've played. But I would implore you to experiment with every single setting that you can. Fire a motion smoothing. So... So what this does is um, you'll see I can move my hands like crazy. Um, and so basically this kind of like stabilizes the gun even more if you want to keep it steady. So this is, uh, we'll show off no motion smoothing. I actually keep motion smoothing off. But you can see it's, you know, a little bit, you know, up and down and whatnot. And it's not super smooth. But then, you know, we'll turn it up all the way to high to show off the difference. And... You know, I'm doing the same motion and it is perfectly steady, right? And so, again, I would experiment with the amount of motion smoothing you want to put on because also, if you're trying to go side to side a lot, you're going to be a little bit slower on the flick, but again, you're going to be steady. So, the next setting then is dominant hand. And so, of course, this literally just means, you know, are you shooting righty or are you shooting lefty? Now, if you switch it to left, as you just see, now my... Now my menu is on my right hand because I'm doing my actions with my left hand. So again, I go swap out to right and then boom, my menu is now on my right hand. Control steam standard flipped is pretty much the same thing in terms of, you know, are you gonna move with your left hand or if I flip it, now I'm moving with my right hand. Virtual turn mode. So you have um, 
Of course, you can turn IRL, like move your head side to side, or you can use your joystick to artificially turn. And so there are two modes of this. There is snap turn where you hit the joystick once or you hold it and you snap, right? And then there is smooth turn, which is where you're, where you're turning in a continuous motion and you're using your joystick to do so. I personally used to be a snap turn player for about 1300 hours of VR and then I finally made the transition to smooth turn. Smooth turn is definitely more nausea inducing and if you're prone to motion sickness or if you're newer to VR, I would stay away from smooth turn initially until you get your VR legs. So um, I would stick with either snap or just no artificial turn. And then so snap turn angle, you can adjust how much your how much each snap is. So this is 45 degrees. And then you can adjust it all the way down to 15 degrees. Smooth turn speed is basically the same thing. So I'm basically turning 270 degrees in a second. So if I were to, you know, time that exactly, I'd be right here at about a second. Um, virtual movement mode. Uh, that is continuous or continuous hand. So if I turn on continuous hand, basically wherever my hand goes is wherever I will go. Right? And then continuous is just wherever my wherever I'm looking is going to be forward. This is head-oriented movement. And I personally prefer continuous just because um, looking where you're going, again, is less motion sick inducing. Virtual crouch. So another accessibility setting for those that play seated, um, although you can still use it as well. So virtual crouch means if I pull down on my joystick, I will crouch. I'm still standing in real life, but in the game, I'm crouched. And so you can turn that on or off based on what setting you have. Grip mode. So for those of you that have grip buttons, you can either hold for grip, or if you just press your grip button once, I'm not holding on to my grip button or anything. I'm like flinging my index controller around. My hand is like actually out here, but I can toggle the grip on and off. Personally, I prefer hold grip just because again, it's a little bit more immersive and I feel more in control of what I'm doing. So handgun pitch mode, this is a new one. So the handgun pitch mode determines how you know, far up or down your handgun is positioned. So you have three settings, comfort, natural, and steep. So um, we'll put on comfort first, and you can see that my handgun, and I'm holding my hands out straight forward, it's kind of pointed down, right? And so now I can aim it up a little bit. And then, so my hands are pointed up a little bit, but the gun is kind of straight forward. Natural is probably the most natural position. And so I hold my hands forward, and my gun is pointed forward. Steep means that my gun is going to be pointed up, but my hands are pointed forward. So I have to lower my my hands a little bit to get the gun to point forward. All right, so we're going to switch that back to natural. Physical stock, this is for people that have physical stocks, and this will just kind of adjust for... You know, if you have a physical stock or whatnot and allow you to adjust your gun angle or whatnot, depending on whether you use like a pro tube or whatnot. Again, I keep that off because I don't actually use a physical stock and that will be probably another video going into whether those are worth it or not. But anyways, um, firearm grip swapping. So this means, this means that um, I can basically swap to my other hand or, you know, Um, basically <laughs> what I was trying to say was, so I can have my hand here and then grab my pistol. So grab my pistol and shoot. So if I had this disabled, what this basically does is, you know, I have to hold it like that. And then, yeah, honestly, it's a setting that I keep disabled. Um, I probably didn't explain it the best cause I don't use it, but, um, basically this probably allows you to swap whichever hand you're able to shoot with anyways magazine grip mode standard or trigger grip this basically just means that 
do you grip your magazine with your trigger grip or are you gripping it with your grip button? And so we'll use the AK-12 as a demonstration of that because this is a weapon that requires you to grip the magazine in order to get it out. So, um, go away. If I have it on standard, what this means is that I'm gripping using my grip button or on index, you know, the sensors. Right, and then if I have it on trigger grip, this basically means that I am using the trigger to grip the weapon, or to grip the magazine. So anyways, let me get my M4 again. All right, so the next setting that we're gonna do is um, tactical grip mode. And so tactical grip is basically the same thing, except this is for your equipment. So like your nades that you have on your hands or wherever it gets placed on the rig whenever this game go, um, adds rig customization. So in this case, I use my tr uh, grip button to grip my nades. Trigger grip would basically mean I use my trigger grip to toss it and then use my actual grip button to arm the grenade. So spectator turn sensitivity, that's for when you're spectating. And then um, plutosphere compatibility, that's for if you game on a plutosphere. Again, I don't use that, but this game does support gaming on plutosphere. And then haptic feedback, that's basically just, you know, does gun vibrate when you shoot it? Or not. So you can turn that on or off. Visual. So now we're at the visual settings. So these are personally my settings. I keep everything on low for right now and they're doing a very good job at optimizing it. You know, I'm keeping it at a steady 90 frames a second. I don't know if you can see my FPS VR right there, but um, even then on anything that's like a 30, 80 or whatnot, this game can run at a 120. Um, again, it entirely depends on the rig. I would highly recommend getting a good CPU if you're going to play any sort of VR game. Um, a lot of VR games tend to be very CPU heavy. I'm going to put that as like big, bold letters at the top so that you can see that. So anti-aliasing, post-processing, shadow quality, texture quality, I still keep on high. Um, just cause effects quality low and you know, what I'm caring for here is frames. Now I can definitely mess with these settings and whatnot, but for right now, um, that's that. So player highlight intensity. So this is basically, there are player highlights. And if you go into lobby and we can actually hop into a lobby and show that off or actually show off some gameplay of that, but you can select your enemy highlight color. Um, and I elect to uh, show them as like bright purple so that they have a bright purple outline. And again, I'm showing that across some gameplay right now. So then spectator eye view. Um, so this is for if you're in the death room and you're looking at, you know, any sort of spectator. So you can see, you know, left eye, if you're lefty, right eye, and then elect to show the UI or not. And then spectator live camera mode, you can do mixed third person or first person. So you can kind of mess around with that as well. Um, audio is just audio settings. So we'll, We'll bump up the music a little bit so you can hear the menu music. I personally keep that down so I can talk with friends while I'm in the armory and, you know, actually hear myself. But the music in the background is good. Uh, don't hate me, devs, but it's good music. Um, <laughs> I just keep it down just because. Sound effects volume, of course, I keep that up. So voice chat... Um, Output device, uh, you can have different sort of, uh, you can select your uh, thing that you're going to speak in-game with because this game has in-game comms. Um, voice chat output volume, you can do that. And then the input mode, you can do open mic. Uh, and I'll set this to something. Hmm, okay. It's not recognizing my index for whatever reason, probably because, you know, some setting that I have in Windows. But you can do open mic. Oh, wait, that's the output device. Duh. Imagine. So that's what it goes out to. And then um, input device, open mic, push to talk, which you could set a push to talk bind. And then you can do it completely muted. And that is pretty much all the settings. And then, of course, you have calibrate height. So basically, the game will calibrate your height for you. And everybody 
in game is going to be the same height, which I personally like that from a competitive standpoint because that means that you know you're not going to have somebody who's like eight foot tall and you have to aim up like this versus you know somebody that's like four foot two and you have to aim at the ground. But uh, basically, you know, if you wind up crouched like this, you can um, just hit simply hit that calibrate height button and then it will fix that for you. So that is all the settings. Now let's get into the fun stuff, the guns of the game, and so. Um, we're going to kind of briefly go over each weapon and I'm going to put up their stats from what I have so that you have an idea of what to use. And so, uh, we'll start with, we'll start with the pistols and work our way down this way. So currently there are three pistols in the game as well as a pistol SMG or a machine pistol. So we'll start with the one that, um, that you'll probably use a lot and this is the Glock. Now my Glock looks fancier than the standard Glock because I participated in the IVRL you know, uh, tournament that happened this past summer and so each team that participated got a Glock skin. So if you're into competitive and you want the extra cool swag you might get some if you uh, participate in that. So anyways I'll show off this. This is the Glock and you'll see the stats on screen and it's very much a um, volume by fire weapon in terms of it has the largest magazine of all the pistols, um, but it has the lowest range of each pistol. Um, it can one hit headshot up close, but then it falls down to two hit headshots at far range and then, you know, further on from there. It's pretty accurate. It doesn't have a lot of recoil and we'll show that off. And even firing at like the max fire rate, it's really not that hard to use. So when you're out of ammo, what you're going to do is you'll hit your magazine release button and that will slide the magazine out. It'll take a new magazine from your side, put it in the gun, and then of course rack the slide. Or you can just, we'll do this as an example. Um, I got to shoot one. Maybe. I need to show this off with another gun, but you can hit the ma you can hit the slide release as well. Is what I was going for, but you know, of course, the gun didn't want to do that for me. But the Glock, I highly recommend it, and um, you know, it's a fun little gun to use. On the middle end of the spectrum, we have the uh, PL. What is this? I forget the name for this. The PL14. And it has, slight, it has a slightly smaller magazine size, does slightly more damage, and it's a pretty good in-between of the Glock and the USP. So here's it in action. And so again, what you do with this gun, same thing. Check the mag, put it in, and then rack the slide, and then you're all good. I haven't used this pistol as much. Uh, some people might prefer it. It feels like it has lower recoil than the Glock, but... Um, Again, it's got a slightly smaller magazine size. Next up is the silenced USP or the MK23. And somebody's going to yell at me for calling it a USP. Sorry, that's the CS coming in. But um, this gun has the most recoil of the pistols. But at the trade-off of having the furthest one-hit headshot damage and also having the most body shot damage. So this gun, like every other pistol, you just eject the mag, take another one, and then you can either grip the slide or just hit the slide release. Um, last up, we have the, uh, I gotta get the names of all these because these are like brand new, uh, the PM9. And this is basically a machine pistol and it has two fire modes, as you see, automatic and semi. And it's a pretty good automatic pistol. It's low damage, but at the cost of you have a fully automatic pistol on pistol round. And it's not too bad up close when you're trying to one-hand it. This is also very fun to dual wield, so I would highly recommend doing that if you manage to get two of them. Um, next, we're going to move to the SMGs. And so right now, there are currently three SMGs in the game. The first one is the UMP, and this one does the most body shot damage out of all the SMGs, and it can in fact one hit to the head at close range. At the cost of the fact that um, 
it has got the slowest rate of fire. But like the other guns, you can either grip the mag out or hit the mag eject, and then you can just simply rack the charge handle. And they probably will add, you know, the good old HK slap into the game at a later point, but for right now, that's what you do with it. And it also, like the other guns, has a single fire and a fully automatic fire mode. The next one is probably one of the best guns in the game, and I'm actually going to swap to it here because I have a fancy skin for it, and I feel like showing it off. This is the ACP-9, AKA one of the best, if not the best gun you can use in the game. This has a very good body shot damage up close. It does fall off rather quickly, but it also has a very high rate of fire and a low recoil. Like, uh, like the other um, SMG, you can just hit the mag eject, put a new one in, and then rack the charge handle. And this gun's cool because it actually has, as you can see, an ambidextrous charge handle. So it works good for both lefties and righties. And like the other fire modes of the other guns, you can semi-tap it or you could just let her rip. Cool gun. The Vector is the final of the three SMGs, and this features the highest fire rate, but at the cost of the lowest damage. And this one actually only has a burst mode and fully auto, so. This gun, it falls off in damage relatively quickly, and you'll see that on screen, like I said, and it has a, the same magazine size as the ACP-9, and you can actually see that on the magazine counter, which I forgot to show off. But, it's got the lowest recoil. In fact, you literally don't have to control it because the gun in real life is designed to be... Or to have no recoil. And so literally, I'm not moving my hands. And it shoots pretty straight. This is honestly a pretty easy gun to use. And if you're just getting into the game and you like playing up close, this might not be a bad choice. Next, we've got are assault rifles and right now there are three of them and there will be many more don't worry but the bread and butter of the assault rifles in my opinion and the one that most people use is going to be the m4 or the mk whichever you'd like to call it they're pretty synonymous um it says a 30 round magazine plus one and you know single shot and fully auto it's got very low recoil, and it does a moderate amount of damage, and it can also one-tap up to a good range at the head. So, again, you can also grip the M4 in one of three spots if you like doing the, you know, more, the more tactical grip. You can grip it at the very front of the barrel, you can grip it in the middle, or you can grip it right at the magazine. So, with this gun, you have to hit the magazine eject, put in a new magazine, and I'm not going to grab a pistol mag, and then you can either hit the uh, bolt release, or you can just rack the charge handle. And there you go. The slightly longer range and the slightly more damaging but slower fire rate weapon of the assault rifle class is the AK-12. And this is one of the guns in the game that has a lot of, you guessed it, weapon skins. And this ha everybody has access to this, I'm pretty sure. And so there are skin videos up there. You can, you know, put, put it in camo or, you know, you can phase up. Uh, this one's forest. Yeah, so it's got, like, green camo. They actually, I think they just added that one. And then, there, of course, there's the bright neon two-tone that's metallic and looks really cool. Anyways, this gun has slightly more recoil, slightly more damage at range, uh, but a slower rate of fire to kind of compensate for that. So this one, like we showed off earlier, you can just simply trigger grab, put in a new magazine, and then rack the charge handle, maybe, if my guy wants to do that. Alternatively, if you're feeling cool, you can hit the magazine right at the charge hand or right at the uh, magazine release and then put it in. Maybe. Oh, that was almost cool. Ye there we go. We'll pretend I didn't completely screw that up, but you get the point. 
this is all just one take and I'm just going with the flow here. So that's the AK-12 in a nutshell. Again, a pretty solid weapon to use if you like those really long range fights. And speaking of long range, we're going to slide over to the gun that has a lot of recoil and I think needs a little bit of love. This is one that for right now I might avoid, um, but you know, hopefully it gets a little bit better. This is the SCAR and it is default single shot. But as you can see, it has quite a lot of recoil. And so this is a gun that if you're going to fire it in full auto, you're going to need to fire it in bursts of, you know, three to four. But it's consistently a three hit body shot to all ranges. And then at most, at pretty much the furthest ranges until you're like really, really far away. This thing is a one hit headshot. So if you like the super long range fights or if you like, you know, having a DMR, for example, this might be your go to gun. So, and same thing with all the other weapons, you can hit the magazine release, put it in, and then you can either rack the charge handle, or you can just hit the bolt release, maybe. It doesn't like to open. I wonder why. Anyways, that is the SCAR. So, that is all the weapons in Vale that are, you know, public at the moment. There's a couple hidden ones, and I challenge you to go find them around the armory. That's the only hint I'm going to give you. And so, the last thing we need to go over in terms of weapons and utility is, well, the utility part. So, we have the frag grenade. So, this is a, you know, of course, it does damage. It blows people up. And so, what you do is you'll grip it or trigger grip it, depending on your setting, which we talked about earlier. And then you're going to arm it with the other grip button. So, if you're gripping it with your actual grip button, you're going to arm it with your trigger. And then if you're grabbing it with your trigger, you're going to arm it with your grip button. So right now, I don't have any button on my trigger, or I don't have any finger on my trigger. You're going to hear a beep. You toss it. It blows up. Same thing goes for the other grenades. So this is the flashbang. It blinds people. And if you're close enough, you're going to be blind in terms of both you know, vision as well as you're going to be deafened because of, well, the bang part. And so that is the flashbang, and it's a very good tool to be able to, you know, enter into a room or into a site. And, you know, you can make use of it. The last piece of utility for right now is the smoke grenade. And so the smoke grenade, as the name implies, when you arm it, creates a field of smoke. And so when you don't arm it, of course, it used to be that you didn't have to arm it, but all the grenades now you have to arm. And I just wanted to show that off and I did that on purpose, totally. And so when you get inside the smoke, your character starts coughing and your vision is blurred. And so the enemies can hear this and so you can actually play around with it. But um, this is basically a, you know, a diversion or a, you know, area denial device because it denies visually. Now you can still shoot through smokes, of course, but you know, you can use it to block off uh, lines of sight. So if I want to smoke off this door, for example, maybe that went a little far. But, you know, basically now I can't see if somebody were down a hallway or whatnot. So that's what smoke grenades are for. And I would advise you to learn as much as you can about how each bit of util works in scenarios. And, you know, learn how to get really crafty with it. Anyways, so we've talked about guns. We've talked about settings. We've talked about util. We talked about, you know, training your skills and everything. Um, in this area, this is where you can set your loadouts and you can set your utility here and your left utility and your right utility. So this is what spawns on, you know, your left hand. That's what spawns in your right hand. Your secondary weapon, of course, you can select there and you can select the different site. So if I were more into the reflex site, this is what I can get. Versus if I like the red dot, that's what I get. And you have more options depending on what weapon you're selecting. So like the M4, you know, I can select the holographic site or I can select the red dot site. The reflex site. Or I guess not on this one. The prism site, which is kind of like a red dot scope. 
And then the actual scope. So we're going to put that back to holographic. And then you can also select, if you're feeling, you know, adventurous, you can select iron sights. I don't think you can uh, AR slap just yet, but soon maybe that'll happen. Uh, so that's where you go to select your loadouts. Your social, of course, is like, you know, you can invite your friends to a party and whatnot. Um, the score is going to show your scoreboard and it shows your kills, deaths, assists, and everything. Um, and then you have the server browser. And this is where you select what game that you want to play. So as you can see, there's a couple of custom games going on that are locked. And then, of course, there is a couple of public lobbies. And then you can also make your own game. So to do that, what you do is you open up your menu and you can select custom game. You can set it to open or closed. And so if you do closed, it'll create a password. And then you can select the region. So you can filter between US East, US West, Europe, and Oceania. And then once you do that, you can hit create lobby. And what that'll do is that'll open up the lobby. And now people see that I have made a lobby with this password, but they're not going to know the password. You have to give that to them. If you make it open, then people can start joining. And so every time you swap it to open and closed, it will create a new password. And so what you can do is on the right, you can select the game mode. So artifact, like we were saying, is the main competitive mode. Picnic is like the fun social mode. And then TDM is the you know standard team deathmatch. And there will also be capture the orb or CTO in there. Um, Spoiler alert. And so on the left, you can select the map. So you can have Kiti, you can have Volt, Mar, Miru, and Suna. The five official maps. And then, of course, Capture the Orb has its own map. So if you want to start the game, then you simply select Start Game. And then if you want to leave the lobby, you select Leave Lobby. So in terms of all the settings and everything, that's pretty much it in terms of, you know, um, everything that you need to know to get started. Now... What I'm going to offer you right now is, you know, a couple of pro tips, if you will. So, um, the first thing we were talking about is, you know, aim. Because, you know, everybody in an FPS needs to know how to aim. And we were talking about that virtual stock setting earlier. And so, like I said, the first thing that you should do is, you know, feel out what type of virtual stock you want. The second thing that you should do is, you know, you should figure out how you want to position your hands. And so, right now... If I were to hold my hands out in real life, get that nade out of there, then this is how I'm holding my hands in real life. Right? Some people might often hold their hands in a controller stack fashion, so their gun might be out a little bit further, and they're doing all their motions with, you know, their arms, not really, you know, adjusting with the one arm or whatnot. Some people might often or opt to do the T-Rex strat, which is where you have all oh, this force grab. By the way, you can force grab. So, like, you'll see, like, you put your hand at something and then just boom. And then you could toss it. Anyways, that's screwing me up more than helping right now. So, <laughs> you can put your hand up to your face like this and then hold your other hand out like this. And so, what that allows you to do is keep it pretty steady or keep it up to your face. Um, I personally do hands apart. That's not something that everybody does, but you know, it's what I've grown accustomed to over the years of playing VR. And so I would experiment with that first. And then the other thing is, you know, making sure that your posture is all good. So if you're kind of just standing still like this and your feet are together and you're just kind of, you know, not able to rotate. The important thing about VR is that in addition to, you know, what your hands are doing, you have to be mindful of what the rest of your body's doing. You know, if you, if I need to flick to somebody that's, you know, to my right, and normally I would be dead in that situation, I need to be able to turn my body as fast as possible so that I can flick onto them. So keeping a kind of loose stance and making sure that, you know, it's not very rigid and straight and, you know, restricted. You want to just make sure that you have as much motion as you can and be as free-flowing, so to speak. So posture and how you hold your arms out are two very important details in how to aim in any sort of VR FPS. And I have a whole nother video that I'm going to go into more detail about this, but 
those are two things that I would definitely just experiment with. Uh, the other big thing is that you should always, and I mean always, be aiming for the head. As headshots are pretty lethal in this game, you're going to always want to figure out where that head level is. And so you're going to want to just basically walk around a map, keep your gun aimed up at head level, and you're going to want to make sure that you're always trying to shoot people in the head. The other thing is that you move faster when your gun is down versus when it's aimed. Down and then aimed. So you're going to have to get used to keeping your gun down and then flicking up and aiming at people. Or just pre-aim angles if you're playing a little bit more passively and you're just you know trying to hold a part of the map. Either works or you can even just lower your gun like that and then just pre-aim the angle. And again, you're aiming at headshot level, and that is such an important thing to always just keep going through your head. So, movement, of course, is important, and you're going to want to be strafing side to side more often than just kind of standing still. Because if you're standing still, then you're a really easy target. So you want to make yourself as hard of a target to hit as possible. So, you know, strafing side to side, maybe even crouching a little bit if you're, you know, holding a really cheesy angle or whatnot. Um, the other part of aiming, besides the actual aiming part, is the recoil control. And so in Veil, the recoil is, on most guns, pretty generous. Um, as you can see, I don't really have to move my hands that much. And the M4 shoots pretty straight. Versus the SCAR, if I'm not moving my hands, my recoil's already gone up into the sky. So... In this instance, I have to pull my front hand down and maybe even my back hand down a little bit, but mainly my front hand to compensate for that recoil that's going up. With the M4, I don't have to do that as much, but you're still going to want to pull down ever so slightly anyways. Because if you just let it go, then it's just going to go up. So you want to keep your hand pulled down a little bit just so that the gun stays straight. The AK-12 even a little bit more so. So recoil control, best way to practice it, you have the armory here. You have infinite mags essentially. Just aim at a wall. Let the gun go and then try to counteract what your gun is doing. So in this case, the M4 is really not doing too much. And so you just try to get as many bullets into the same you know, bullet hole as possible. And so with the AK-12, for example, this one has a little bit more recoil. So you can see that it kicks up into the right a little bit. So you're going to pull, you're going to want to pull down into the left a little bit again to compensate for that. That's just a quick and dirty of recoil control and it's something that you're going to have to learn if you want to you know control a gun at further distances especially if you're trying to shoot heads at further distances so we talked about recoil control we talked about you know aiming and that's just you know the basics of it there's more to aiming like you know tracking you know if an enemy is moving, you want to be able to track them with your sights. You need to be able to flick to an enemy. So if I'm... And that's a really bad example because that's like a super hard flick because, you know, small sight or small target or whatnot. But you need to be able to go between tracking a target, you know, keeping your sight on the target as you're moving. And this is a really good way to practice it. And you can do this for however long. And do it with smaller targets, too, to really practice just keeping your gun on the target. Because this is this one that I'm aiming at right now is generally how small a player's head is going to be at further ranges. So you're going to want to be able to keep your sights on that as best as possible. And then, in addition, you're going to want to be able to flick from, from head to head and so on and so forth. So practicing the small little flicks from you know there to there or the big flicks from there to there. Whichever you want to do is a good way to be able to practice that. So tracking and flicking are two important parts of aiming. Again, I'm going to cover that in a completely separate guide, my aim guide. Um, 
it's coming soon trademark, I guess. But in terms of actual, you know, what you need to know about Veil, that's pretty much it. And so, you know, there's the artifact game mode, which we went over. TDM, capture the orb is just basically capture the flag where you grab the orb and then you bring it back to your base. And it's not in this build that I'm in right now, but um, soon enough it will be. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to leave them in the description below. If I missed anything, feel free to let me know because, you know, the best way to get an answer on the internet is to tell something wrong. <laughs> so, um, if I missed anything, feel free to let me know. And if you have any questions or if you want a game, just let me know. But, uh, I hope you enjoy your time in Vail. And I welcome you to it with open arms and I'm excited for this community to grow and I cannot wait to see where this game goes. So I hope to see you in some matches. My name's Vinyal Hat and I will see you next time. Take it easy.